everyone, I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be doing my January wrap up. I managed to read 7 books in the month of January so let's just jump right in. The first book that I read was Rings of Time by Renée Vallette which was sent to me by the author so thank you very much. This is about a girl who is an orphan and when she's trying to find out more about her family history she ends up falling back in time to 1913. As you do. I've basically done this one outlander but Canadian. Once you see the parallels between the plots you just can't unnotice them. However as you might expect this one is a lot less dense than outlander because it's a lot thinner and it's also not Scottish. But there's a Scottish person in it so... I found this one to be a really entertaining read, it was quick, it's not one that you would take too seriously, it was just a bit of light entertainment. I did find the writing a bit awkward at times, especially at the beginning, it made me cringe and I think it didn't work well when the author tried to take on the protagonist's thoughts because it just sounded silly. <laughs> I don't know whether it's just because they were trying to sound young but it just, no, no thank you. <laughs> But the writing did reach a better flow as the story went on. I particularly liked the smaller details on the historical side of things as you would expect that I would. Finding out particulars about how people run homesteads and things like that was just fascinating to me. I will say that it reached a pretty abrupt ending I think but I'm pretty sure this is the first in a series so maybe that's why. I don't know if it's going to be continued on or not but it just seemed a bit abrupt to end where it did. But yeah it was a light, fun read and I rated it 3 out of 5 stars. <laughs> I then picked up No Smiths by Kevin Crossley Holland and illustrated by Jeffrey Allen Love which was sent to me by Walker Books a while ago, it was in my most recent book haul. This one is a dramatised retelling of the No Smiths, kind of like an introductory for a younger audience. Because it's for a younger audience it's a really simple style and I think I just think it was a really good introduction to the Norse myths, especially because a lot of the names are overwhelming to wrap your head around. I was a bit apprehensive at first because it does kind of do a bit of info dumping and just throws you right in, but the stories do a good enough job at evening all that out. I will say that I'm not a massive fan of the art style, it's pretty much all the same as this cover. I don't know, I like silhouette styles but there's just something about this one that didn't really grab me, but it worked <laughs> and I also wasn't really pulled into the stories and I think that is just because it was for a younger audience so it's not really saying much considering I'm not the target audience for this book but I do like how the stories kind of took on a continuous chronological order to them because technically they are all separate stories but Kevin Crossley Holland managed to weave them all together into one extended one so that it kind of made sense. <laughs> I ended up rating this one 3.5 stars. <laughs> I then picked up Batman Nightwalker by Maria Lou, which is the second book in the DC Icon series. This was sent to me by Penguin, so thank you very much. It's the last book that I read this month that was sent to me, so you'll stop hearing that sentence soon. <laughs> this, again, I found to be a really fun read. I don't know much about Batman, I literally just know the fact that he drives the car. <laughs> which, that sentence alone sums up how much I don't know. <laughs> But I feel like I benefited from not knowing that much because if I went into this with the heroic figure of Batman in my head, I might have been let down because it's very much Bruce Wayne, it's not Batman, it's Bruce Wayne. I know they're the same person but at this point they're not because this follows Bruce Wayne before he was Batman. I feel like Marie Lou was the perfect person to write this story because there's a lot of technical things in it but she can write technical storylines in a way that doesn't seem overwhelming which is exactly what I need because anytime anything technological comes into my life I'm, I just malfunction which is kind of fitting to be fair. I did question the plausibility because police don't do these things, I swear I have this problem with every book but police don't do the things that they do in these books and it was just one of those really convenient storylines where he seemed to find the perfect clue at the perfect time just to guide the story along and it was really quick paced though, I read this in 24 hours it was pretty entertaining and I rated it 3 out of 5 stars. Next up I read Salsi Tales by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is a collection of short stories inspired by Robert Louis Stevenson's settling in Samoa. This has actually made me think of a discussion video to have because my main problem with this is hard to explain. <laughs> Basically because of when this was written it is racist. There's a very imperialistic egotism about it because the British Empire was a thing and apparently everyone needs civilising which is just... 
it made me so uncomfortable to read that sort of thing because obviously I don't agree with it but then it's the historical context behind it and I, uh, it's so hard to rate that kind of thing which is what the discussion I'm planning on doing will be about but yeah it was hard in that sense but other than that it was a pretty slow read but I feel like it wouldn't have worked as a quick read either so that was fine with me it was just because the writing style itself was pretty descriptive when it got to things that you just didn't particularly care about and it was that descriptive then you would slow down it had quite a dark atmosphere about it and what I really loved was that the stories had a gothic theme to them which massively contradicted the setting because the setting was islands inspired by Hawaii and Samoa and places like that you'd have this gloriously sunny day and then the really dark story behind it which I really loved I don't know why that contradiction just stuck with me but it was just something I'd not read before and I like my dark stories so having something to change it up a bit really helped <laughs> but yes I ended up writing this four out of five stars <laughs> my next one was a reread and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte I read this a few years ago when I was studying it for A levels and now I'm studying it again at university so I will know everything there is to know about this book by the time I'm finished <laughs> I think I originally rated it 3.5 stars but I've actually bumped that up to 4 stars because this time round I just got so caught up in the story I just think that the flowery language that a lot of classics are known for really intensify the story for me because you can't help but feel every single emotion so keenly it's like in this book with Rochester now I don't like Rochester at all but I can't blame people for getting caught up with his character because you're reading through Jane Eyre's perspective you can't help but start feeling her emotions because of how well they're expressed and especially because I read this alongside an audiobook to speed things along being able to hear the emotions as well just added another layer entirely to them and I just I got so into this book when I was reading it again it's not quite a gothic book but it does have a darker dreary more somber kind of atmosphere around it I did find myself continually infuriated by how self-righteous all the men are in this book but it didn't take anything away from it for me and like I said I ended up rating it 4 out of 5 stars I then picked up a very short introduction to witchcraft by Malcolm Gaskill this is exactly what it says it is an introduction to the history of witchcraft and it took me a while to read like considering it's so tiny it took me a while to read just because it's more academically written than I was anticipating now by saying that I'm not saying that it's hard to read it's not dense it's quite easily accessible it's just that alongside the critical theory reading that I was already doing at university and the fiction books that I had to read for university I didn't want to then come home and read a academically written non-fiction <laughs> So it did take me a while to read but I did find it fascinating as you would expect that I would because it's witchcraft and it's history. Perfect match for me but I rated this 3 out of 5 stars. And the final book that I read in January was Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad which I hated <laughs> so much. Again I had to read this one for university and I listened to an audiobook to try and speed it along and even though the audiobook was only 4 hours long it was the longest 4 hours of my life I swear to god. <laughs> This follows a seaman who tries to find a famous ivory trader, I think. Just the fact that I'm not quite sure explains how well this book went for me because I honestly couldn't tell you what happened. It was only about 90 pages long and I still wouldn't have finished it if I had the choice. <laughs> it just rambled on for way too long. I swear there was about 16 pages talking about a steamboat which just drained the life out of me word by word. And it's intensely racist which is part of the reason we're studying it because we are actually studying imperialism in books at the minute and how it represents people i.e. this book represents people that aren't English awfully so that's fun I'm excited to absolutely roast this book in class <laughs> but yeah wasn't a fan and judging from what everyone else has been telling me no one else is a fan either so if you end up if you are actually a fan of this book then please do comment down below explaining why because I'm really intrigued no one seems to like this book I don't know how it became a canonized piece of literature because who decided that would be fun to study <sighs> anyway I'm gonna stop roasting this book now but on that happy note, those were the books that I read in January. If you've read any of these, then please do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. All the links to the books will be in the description box alongside links to my social media. I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!